Procedure for Falling Head Permeability Test. The permeability test that we will use determines the flow rate of water through hot mix asphalt or HMA mixtures. The test is conducted using six inch samples of compacted HMA or cores of HMA taken from the field. Field cores must be separated into each lift. Under ideal conditions, the material would be impervious to surface moisture. If water enters the HMA mixtures, it may cause stripping, which will damage the aggregate asphalt bond. A high number of air voids will lead to a permeable mixture that will allow water to enter the HMA. If these air voids are interconnected, water will flow through the HMA. Air voids are defined as the total volume of the small pockets of air between the coated aggregate particles in a compacted HMA mixture. Air voids are directly related to the permeability of a mixture. As the air voids increase, the permeability of the sample will increase. Air voids are expressed as a percent of the total volume of the compacted mixture. The standard procedure for determining air voids is the saturated surface dry method specified by ASTM D2726. After the percentage of air voids is determined, measure the diameter and thickness of the samples. To measure the diameter of the sample, measure two points that are at 180 degrees to each other. To measure the thickness of a sample, measure four points that are 90 degrees apart and calculate the average of those points. Perform the permeability test using a dual-mode flexible wall permeameter from the design by the Carroll Warner Company. Place a six-inch sample in a chamber and allow water to flow through it. The rate of flow is then measured to determine the permeability. The inside of the chamber in which the test specimens are placed is covered by a flexible membrane. During testing, this membrane is pressurized, forcing it against the sides of the test specimen. This prevents water from flowing along the sides of the specimen and forcing water to flow only through the specimen. If water is allowed to flow past the sides, the data will be inaccurate. A tube is placed in the upper cap that covers the chamber. Water is poured into the tube to create a column of water. This column of water will flow through the specimen. Measure the rate of flow to find mixture permeability values. The testing procedure is performed as follows. Submerge samples in water overnight to assure saturation. Vacuum saturation may also be done to saturate the samples. Vacuum saturation is done by placing the sample into a vacuum chamber filled with water and connecting a vacuum of at least 28 millimeters of mercury to it for 15 minutes. The sample is allowed to stand in water for 10 minutes after the vacuum is removed. This removes any trapped air that may be in the sample. Place a flexible membrane around the inside of the sample chamber. Make sure that the clamps are secured tightly around the membrane. Connect the pressure line to the vacuum nozzle. Remove the air from between the membrane and the wall of the test chamber by pumping the vacuum. This allows the chamber to fit around a six inch test specimen without tearing the membrane. Next. Place the upper cap on the test chamber. Make sure the upper cap is even with the top of the sample in a level position. Place the spacer on top of the permeameter base. Then place the test specimen on top of the spacer. The spacer that is used should not inhibit water flow in any way. At this point, the chamber is placed over the top of the specimen and secured to the permeameter base with C-clamps. C-clamps are necessary to prevent pressure from pushing the upper cap out of the chamber. Place the tube that measures the height of the water into the upper cap. It must be seated past the O-ring and pop into place. The tube is 36 inches in length. Now, undo the pressure line and allow it to hang freely. Also, make sure the downstream gray valve on the PVC pipe is closed should only be opened when draining water from the system. Fill the PVC pipe with water. It must be filled completely. Water will enter the chamber and tube 
and come to equilibrium with a PVC pipe around the 5 inch mark of the tube. The system must be at equilibrium in order to add pressure to the chamber. Close the upstream or blue valve under the stand when water reaches equilibrium. This valve will be opened later to start the test. Next, place the pressure line on the pressure nozzle. The sample holder should be pressurized to at least 5 pounds PSI. This pressure prevents water from flowing along the side of the sample, as water must flow through the sample. If water is able to flow down the side of the sample, the data will be inaccurate. Once the system is pressurized to at least 5 pounds PSI, fill both tubes completely with water. The pressure line must remain on the pressure nozzle to maintain constant pressure. At this point, you are ready to begin testing. Opening the upstream or blue valve under the stand starts the test. As the valve is open, start a timer. The timer is used to record the times as the water falls through the sample. If the water is falling fast, record the heights every five seconds. If the sample is taking a few minutes to finish, record heights at 30 second or one minute intervals water is falling slowly, record the heights every minute until 5 minutes, then at 10 and 15 minutes. After the 15 minute mark, record times every 15 minutes until 2 hours have passed. The test is finished when the water falls to 3 inches above the equilibrium point, which for this apparatus is the 8 inch mark, or when 2 hours have passed. The test cannot end below the 8 inch mark because the amount of error in the equation to find the K value will be too great. The coefficient of permeability is the K value. The K value is the distance water will travel through the asphalt in a given amount of time. L is the thickness of the sample in millimeters. T1 is the initial time. T2 is the final time. D squared is the diameter of the tube in millimeters squared. Capital D squared is the diameter of the sample in millimeters squared. H1 is the initial height of the water equilibrium point. H2 is the final height of the water equilibrium point. Sample 1 fell under the 125 times 10 to the minus 4th millimeters per second, so it is a good sample. Sample 2 was over the allowed number so it is too permeable. When plotting the time versus height of the fall of water of each sample, the drop in water will be slower as more time passes. Permeability is a very important consideration when looking at hot mix asphalt. A mixture must have air voids that are high enough to prevent rutting. The air voids cannot be so great as to allow excess water into the mixture. If the sample is permeable, water will enter the mix and stripping will occur. Thanks for watching.